Hey, good evening, wood butchers. I don't know what kind of mess this is, but it's my mess and I gotta fix it up. So, we're doing a whole bunch of nice landscaping here. We're getting rid of uh, some of this scraggly grass. It's not growing very good. And we got some really nice uh, concrete edging put in. And uh, along with that, we are going to put some really nice decorative rock, get everything done up. So, we're out in the country. We don't have regular sewer systems. We have a low flow system with a septic tank. Ooh, that's a lovely stench. Anyways, I found out that it has a uh, pump in there. Problem with that is that the uh, uh, sort of access to get the wires and everything out is kind of under the ground. And uh, I need to fix that up. So we are going to build a uh, basically a little tray that's going to go around that octagonal. Uh, it's gonna I'm gonna dig down very carefully and and get it all set out so that it'll sit down on the ground and pull the dirt away from that area so we can get at that if we need to. And uh, and then the rocks can come up to the edge of it and this will sit on top of it and we'll never know that there's a septic tank underneath there but. Again, when they got to service it and pump it out, it'll be easy for them to get at as well. So let's go figure that out. Okay, so I did some calculations. The ins or the outside diameter of that lid for the septic tank is just about 36 inches wide. By the time I figure in some um, uh, space uh, to try and get it over top, and then a little bit of extra space to get in at that uh, sort of fitting uh, for the electrics where the motor attaches into. We're looking pretty much around 40 inches uh, across. So on the internet, I found a octagon calculator. Uh, octagon seems to be my best bet because it's going to give me fairly tight tolerances. And you know how we have uh, sort of that peak where the two ends come together? That'll give me even a little bit more distance coming down. Uh, you'll see what I mean in a minute or in a couple minutes or whenever you get to see this video. Um, so I'm going to have to cut this two by eight um, and it's going to be cut this way. So that this is going to be standing up on the end. Now that's a 12 inch saw. That's seven and a half inches thick. Yeah, it ain't going to work. So instead of doing my miters this way, having the board upright and doing it this way, I'm going to have to tilt the blade. So I'm going to grab my um, uh, sort of uh, a little gadget that I use. It's a little digital angle meter uh, with the magnets on it. And we're going to set this saw to 22 and a half degrees. The way you figure out your angle for an octagon is you take 360 degrees and that's going to be, you know, the total area around and you're gonna to need to make 16 individual cuts. So there's gonna be eight boards, a cut on each end, so eight times two is 16. That gives us uh, 360 divided by 16 equals 22 and a half. So that's our degrees, 22 and a half degrees, and we're good to go. We got Rex in the house here, and he is gonna help me with the angles and everything else like that. Or just snoop around, grab something, and think it's all kind of fun and cute to chew on stuff. Never mind that. Uh, okay, so we got the digital angle meter. And what we need to do is put it on zero. And this thing never goes to zero. Why is that not working? There we go. We got it to zero. Now what we're going to want to do is tilt the angle blade to 22 and a half degrees. So let's see how close we are to 90 degrees with our current setup. Oh, uh, okay, let's unplug the saw. Ah. Don't want to get in trouble from the safety police. Okay, so we're going to take our angle finder, stick it right on the blade. Oh, look at that. 90 degrees. So I have been cutting straight and true. Ah, I never even knew that. Uh, I set these things once and I leave them. Big plug out for the Bosch miter saw. Set it up once two years ago. Still cutting 90 degrees. I never do bevels. So that's why it stays so true, I guess. 
Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to zero that out. And now I'm going to try and figure out how to tilt this saw again and we're going to hit 22 and a half. Give me a few minutes. Hang tight. Okay, so crappy camera uh, work here, but uh, 22.6, I'm going to call that good enough for hand grenades and horseshoes. And uh, we're going to make our first cut on the end of the board, and then we're going to figure out our how long each board needs to be. Okay, it's all set up good, but again, this has just been always temporary as long as it worked for my dust shroud. And everything was set to 90. And I did all my angles, bevels this way and everything. Oh, shoot. I didn't figure out bevels this way. Uh, <clears throat> I think I need to get the knife out and... Uh, reprofile that a little bit. I'll be back in a minute. All right, so I did my first 22 and a half degree cut. It came out really good. Uh, now I had to figure out how, because that 40 inches is on the interior. So I need to figure out the exterior dimensions so when I do the cuts, it all works properly and I can set up a stop block. So I have to add from here to here. For the tips because remember it's going to come out this far this is this is where we're going to measure from out on the other ones um so the interior where this is going to be is going to be the right dimension or, or vice versa i'll show you as i go along so that is just about half an inch you can do the calculations in your head you can do them on a piece of paper sometimes it's easier to just take a chunk of wood cut it and figure out how much that is so it's within half an inch um plus or minus a 50 thou or something like that. So pretty close uh, on this two by stock, which again, every two by stock is a little bit different. So I'm gonna extend um, my calculations by one inch to account for um, the, the change there. And I'll show you as I go along. Now, when I looked at all the calculations, I'm gonna need just over one foot. I think one foot, nine inches and uh, let's find the little sheet of paper over here. By the way, I, I have horrible handwriting. Uh, it's one foot four inches and nine sixteenths. So if I do one foot five inches, I'm going to be pretty close. If I do one foot five and a half inches, I'm even better. So it's going to be basically one foot five inches and a half. Uh, and that's where I'm going to set my... Uh, stop block two. Let me work through that and uh, I'll get back to you in a second. Sorry, one other thing to also remember is the fact that we're not going to change the bevel on that blade because it's a nice 22 and a half degree angle. We are going to want to flip the board over and back and over and back as we do the cuts. So that we're going to have the angle here. And we're going to have the angle here and we want them both angled into the same spot to give us a nice octagon. If we just keep one after the after the other, it's just going to be a straight board. We're going to screw together. So let me make that cut. Sorry, had to explain that. This is why I love shadow lines more than anything else these days. It tells me exactly where that blade's going to be. I can just nudge that uh, board over until it's perfectly lined up with that shadow line. And I know that's exactly where the blade's going to cut. All right, so we got one board out of eight cut. We have our nice 22 and a half degree angle here. And I love how it's all set up. It's perfect. And uh, now what we need to do is figure out how we're going to slide this down the right distance. So the way that's going to work is I'm going to unplug the saw again. Again, I don't want to have anything crazy happening. Again, the light's a separate circuit, so don't worry. It's unplugged, but that's good. And what we're going to do is we're going to lock the saw down so it's in that locked position. All we do now is because we know this is where the saw is going to cut to. We just attach there. And I'm just going to put a stop block right here. And oddly enough, I might have just enough room to stick a three quarter inch piece of plywood right about there. And I'll shim it a little bit and then I'll just butt up to that. Cut, butt up, cut, butt up. And Bob's your uncle. Uh, we're going to have eight of these cut in no time. Okay, so that first thought didn't work. Uh, what did work is just simply opening up my drawer, setting up my uh, scrap piece of lumber uh, right here, and just clamping it 
to the top. It ain't gonna move. And I set it up so that this is gonna have lots of support there. I'm gonna cut it. Now, theoretically, it could trap the saw blade if this thing warps or twists, and that's a little bit of a problem. I'm gonna cut nice and slow and gentle. I'm gonna make a little pass, come back, make a pass, come back, make a pass, just do little nibbles. The thing with the blade being tilted this way is if it does trap it, it's not gonna bind it. This can actually just plop up a little bit. So this has some play to kind of keep the blade from trapping. On this side, I have full control to pull it out of the way. So if it starts to bind up, I can hit the power off. This will flop around a little bit. I think I'll be a lot safer this way. Uh, if I tilt it the other way, um, that gives me a little bit more pause, um, at least in this situation. Hey, in the comment, let me know if I'm off on this. This is not optimal, but it's what I want to do now just to kind of get things going and done. And if you have a better way of doing it, let me know. If any of this helps you out, hey, please subscribe, leave a little thumbs up or something like that. I don't know. I'm trying to make these to videos to help people and give you some ideas of what I'm doing around the house. I'm hoping it's a little bit beneficial to the odd person here and there. It's just for posterity. I love woodworking. I like making a mess. I like sawdust all over the place. I hope you do too. Okay, and as I thought, you could see I was it did trap it a little bit, a little bit of scorching on there. Not exceedingly happy with that, but I was able to control the saw, no issues. I think I'm okay to continue this on. Let me do a bunch more cuts and I'll bring you back when I got a few done together. Okay, so there's one half done. Now just eyeballing it, I was panicking a little bit, thinking, geez, the angle there looks a little bit angle off there. Oh crud, I got my 22 and a half off. And again, this is dimensional lumber that's pressure treated. So it's warpy, twisty, cupped. It's anything from milled and straight. So <laughs> we're going to be using some screws to hold this all, all together and uh, keep her all straight as much as possible. And again, most of it's going to be under the ground. So not so worried that way. I'm going to have to seal all the end cuts and everything else as well. And if I need to, I can even put a 2x4 on top to... Uh, edge this out a little bit more if required. But it's turning out really good. If we look down here, that's a nice six foot straight edge level. Yeah, that's pretty good. Let's go over here. That's pretty darn close. There's the miters there. That's opened up only because it's twisted. That's pretty close. It's only opened up because it's bowed and twisted, but I'll be able to work that all together. So, hey, great. I just got uh, four more to cut, and we're good to go. Just fantastic. So it all worked out good. I have 10 digits. All still good to go. I, I just took it really slow and careful. The last one kind of bound up on me a little bit. I uh, didn't get a perfect cut. It's just the way it's warped and twisted. And I don't know what they call lumber these days. I think a rabid beaver could probably, you know, mill these things down with more accuracy and better quality. Two... Oh, let's see here. These are two by eights, uh, eight feet long, and each of them was $27 after tax. Oh, my goodness. Um, I don't have a choice. I got to get this done. We're doing all the rocks, so got to pay to play. But oh my goodness, it's just phenomenal how pro lumber prices have just gone stupid. Anyways, so it all lines up nicely front to back, side to side. And now it's just time to clean off the assembly table, get it all together. I'm going to end seal each of these uh, because it is going to be in around the rocks and there's going to be a little bit of water and moisture. So we don't want this rotting out in uh, three or four years and have to tear it all out. Uh, let's hope it lasts for 15 to 20 years. I'm going to keep it all uh, 
nicely set up. I'm also gonna put some landscape fabric underneath it to hopefully isolate it a bit from the ground. Um, I don't know, I've always done that. It seems to help a little bit. I don't know if it prevents a ton, but whatever, doing the best I can. So let me assemble this together and show you what it's gonna look like. Well, other than the neighbor way down the road uh, mowing his lawn, it's a pretty nice calm evening. We might even get a little bit of rain. I've heard about that stuff. What's it like? That liquid water falling from the sky. Don't know. Okay, it's all sort of together. All the cuts have been made. Uh, this is a couple days later because of uh, doing some maintenance and some yard work and that type of thing. I'm gluing and screwing this together. I have put, don't know if you can tell, a blob of polyurethane glue on two surfaces of every other one of these units. Uh, I have a band clamp I'm gonna put around it and I'm gonna screw in here, there, here, there. Screw them all together. That should make a really solid unit. It's gonna be relatively water resistant um, and gonna help hold its shape uh, as you know, um, dirt and rocks and stuff are gonna be sitting up against this face. Later today, uh, if it's all holding good with the screws, I'm going to get it out in place and start digging the hole for this thing to go in. Oh, I hate digging. Anyways, uh, it's only like 34 degrees or 32 degrees Celsius, so it's nice and, uh, nice and cool these days. Let me get on with it, and uh, I'll show you when it's all done. All right, all clamped up. First couple of screws are in. If we look at the uh, miters, they've all turned out really good. There's a couple that are a little open at the back end. Uh, I'm okay with that. The other ones are all, you know, as good as you can get from pressure treated lumber that has warps and twists and everything else like that. Again, I'm happier if it's a little bit open at the back end here. You can see these ones are, uh, you know, they're, they're held together. There'll be some foaming polyurethane glue that's going to get in there. Hopefully kind of seal it up a little bit, try and seal the end grain a touch. And it's going to do well. So for warpy, twisty, completely inconsistent wood, I'm pretty happy. I'm going to pull the bank clamp off, finish up the screws, and let it sit for a while and get the shovels out. Good morning, uh, wood butchers. You're going to hear some rock being put into a uh, wheelbarrow. We're getting everything done here. i got a couple guys helping me out. Uh, so this is what we came up with. There is a 2x8. You can probably see right down in there. Oh, it's too dark. Anyways. Uh, down into the ground, I have a two by four. It's removable in case we need to really get at things here. Um, and the landscape fabric is underneath. We're gonna put a little bit of the rock around here to hold everything down. The main reason for doing this is to access that. So anyways, I'm gonna get some more stuff done. We're gonna get a few dumps of rock around here. I gotta get the landscaping fabric finished up on that spot. Now I know where everything is. The fake rock is over here. Once we get a few things done, I'll show you how it all ends up. And basically this should pretty much disappear. Uh, there was a bit of a mismatch between elevations of what our grass and everything else had to be and the extension they put on this, which is good. This means more work for me, but at least I don't have the tank of the septic or the lid of the septic tank sticking 20 feet up in the air. All right, wood butchers. This is the final little setup. It's all done. So looking around here, there's just a couple little spots where some of the um, wood sticks out. You can kind of see just behind here, but I'm okay with that. I think it looks a heck of a lot better than just a big old sewer cap sitting out in the air. So anyways, I got a little bit of fluffs and stuff to clean up, but otherwise you guys have helped me out tremendously and uh, catch you on the next one. All right, uh, everybody, just as an addendum, we need to figure out what to do here. So we got all our landscaping done. We have this little patch of grass, which I thought would be kind of a neat little accent. Problem is after three years of working hard and doing everything right, that's the best I can get it to look. Short of going heavy on lawn maintenance. So we have two things. We can either try and make this nice green grass at some point in time, or should we turn it into a butterfly garden? That's what the missus and the termite want to do. And I'm starting to agree that that's probably the best idea. So anyways, if you have a comment, 
throw it in there. I think a nice little flower garden would look good here on the south side of the house facing the hottest part of the sun. Anyways, have a good one, guys.